if you are interested in the next chapter in the development of the Anglican office, uh, either beyond the St. Bernard Breviary, or maybe you missed the St. Bernard Breviary and are impatient for the end of August when it should next be in print, then uh, I have a treat for you today. It is the St. Alfred Breviary, and it is a delightfully quirky book that I think is just about unlike anything else one is likely to find. Did I mention that this is a somewhat quirky book? Uh, St. Alfred's, for instance, is not really one saint, but two. And the St. Alfred Breviary is part of something called the St. Alfred Customary. That is a project of uh, Father Matthew Branch, who is a, the priest at Grace Episcopal Church up in Massachusetts. And he has a number of books on uh, Lulu and other places, and they all have this same sort of style to them. He has a, a, a style for sure. It's a bit of a quirky style. I mean, how often do you meet someone who is a liturgical scholar and a fife player? And um, the St. Elric Breviary is, well... It's not like any other breviary you're likely to find. It is not something that you could easily carry to the park if you're going to use the whole nine yards because unlike most breviaries, which are kind of a, a work into themselves, uh, this requires to be fully used some other books as well. Uh, it... Uh, requires at least a Bible, and uh, a Bible with what uh, Matthew calls the ecclesiastical books, that is the books that are often called the apocryphal books, or the deuterocanonical books. And of course that is for the sort of normal readings that one might expect to use in an office. But there are also two other books that are cited from time to time. One is the Book of Common Praise, or uh, I forget what it's called when it's published not by, when, well, it's published by the Anglican House Publishers, the Anglican Liturgical Press, but it was uh, developed by the Reformed Episcopal Church, and it's sort of an enlargement, really, in many ways, of of hymnal 1940, so it more or less follows the the old one-year lectionary that I like, but uh, it's also printed with a different title uh, because it has been adopted, at least for now, by the the whole Anglican Church in North America because they they don't quite have a a new hymnal yet that uh, works with the new three-year lectionary. And like many bits of liturgical revision that are going on right now with the uh, revolution, like it or not, with uh, everything being online and downloadable and printed and screenable, who knows whether it will actually come about. But uh, I haven't really tried to see how well the hymns that uh, Matthew recommends work with the places that he he suggests them uh, because, well, there's just more in this book than I've had time to try yet. It is not, I think, a book that one is likely to use in a fell swoop. It is a rather nicely put together book to be a Lulu Press book, not, not as well put together as the works of the Anglican Liturgy Press, who makes just some of the best physically books, and I think in terms of the content, books out there right now. Uh, but to be a print-on-demand book, it's really quite nice with this lovely creamy paper that's thick enough that it's easy to turn the pages. And 
besides the sort of things one might expect, the daily office of morning prayer, the daily office of evening prayer, and uh, Compline that is in most modern, oh, excuse me, a mosquito. Oh, I decided to be quirky and make this video outside. The mosquitoes were decided, oh, feast. It is I'm making on the feast of um, the visitation, not, not blood. But anyway, uh, the Great Litany, which is again common to many of these books. Midday prayer common. But there are also other parts. Private morning devotions, family prayer in the morning, a mid-morning office, a mid-afternoon office, family prayer in the evening, Whoops, I'm not showing this right. Uh, a mid-evening office, a night vigil, and tables of daily hymnody. Let's, let's look at that. I'm not sure if I like this setup of the camera or not, but, but it's, uh, I thought it would be quirky enough to give a try. Oh, I had put in a marker. I forgot that I had put in a marker. I added some ribbons. Not enough. Um... So book darts I've used for the things that might, you know, happen fairly frequently. So here are hymns recommended for each day of the week, uh, based on the new the new uh, numbering of the weeks as propers rather than uh, Sundays after Pentecost. And there is the. Uh, Well, I'm going to move inside. I'm being eaten alive. There we go. Normalcy, as Mr. Hoover said. Anyway, as I was saying, it's uh, convenient to have some book darts because there's just an awful lot to this book. So it has... Well, a lectionary for every day of the year, and uh, I mentioned I'm making this this video on the Feast of the Visitation, and so there are proper readings uh, for this Sunday. This is the normal ACNA Daily Office lectionary. Uh, and then there are the colics for the different times of the year and so I have uh, I have it marked for uh, well actually for tomorrow <laughs> no that's last one here we go you know uh, I'm still struggling from being eaten alive uh, and there is the sort of normal arrangement of psalms, although there are some psalms for uh, use in particular times and a weekly cycle of time. What this book does particularly is let one be just as, uh, as fastidious and devotional as one wants. It's a, not just a normal office, but also a, a devotional book and a catechetical and educational book, as we will see and in the Psalms, uh, Matthew does something that uh, I think is very helpful. He interprets them always in these little super titles in terms of, of uh, Christology or the life of Christ or ecclesiologically, can I say that? Uh, the life of the church. He has a couple of videos. I'll put a link to his YouTube channel below. As I mentioned, he's a delightfully quirky chap. And he talks about reading the Bible Christologically and historically, and certainly he suggests that we look at the Psalms Christologically. Um, here are the, the hymns that I mentioned. Let's see what hymn he suggests for... Uh, for today. 
Let's see, we are in proper three, and it is uh, Friday when I'm making this video, so he suggests him 391. Oops, wrong book. Not only are there these two books, there are two others that I'll mention in again in a minute. As I say, this is this is almost like a a graduate course in traditional Anglican uh, devotion and theology. And of course, one way of looking at Anglicanism it is a it is a blending and melting together a union of theology and devotion and prayer. So, 391, set to King's Fold. He came to dwell on earth. A lovely tune. There are some great tunes in this book. Uh, also, some of the earlier bits and pieces. Private morning devotions. And these are, are they educational? Are they uh, catechetical? I suppose they are educational. And these are readings from, uh, from uh, Ziggy, who wrote Holy Living and Holy Dying. The books Holy Living and Holy Dying were written by Jeremy Taylor. Sometimes it's good to have a helper meet for me. I do forget names. These, uh, I, I, I didn't see any place that it credited them in the book, so I, I texted Matthew and he says, yes, these are from, from Jeremy Taylor. Um, although his arrangement, the, the arrangement of them is, is uh, Father Matthews himself. There is also, uh, let's see, where do we go? In the mid-evening office, there are also suggestions for reading from the Book of Homilies, a fourth book, a uh, third book, I'm losing count, third book, fourth book, <laughs> one might want to add to the pile. Yeah, it takes five books to do this whole whole uh, series of uh, not-so-brief devotions and studies. I don't have a copy of the Book of Homilies, and this may suggest that I need one. Uh, I don't have a lot of brawling and contention in my life for the most part, but it is an election year. And there is an examine, which is, again, not unusual in breviaries, but uh, uh, put here in this sort of extra office, a mid-evening office, rather than, well, I guess before Compline is mid-evening, and this one, one would do it. Uh, Compline is not unusual. One thing I should mention, and I should have mentioned it earlier, is that there are... <laughs> It's a little bit... I love this book because it is just such a magnificent creation. Uh, so much work went into it, and it is, I think, often very useful work. But, uh, you know, there's nobody else but me in the tin can. So the chances of my being able to use Anglican chant effectively are fairly slight. Um... I might have preferred plain song, but then I'm too lazy to make a book like this, and so I can't complain too much. Then there is a night vigil, again with psalms, uh, psalms and lessons. Lessons are not usual in the more recent night vigils, in my experience, but they are here. And let's see, I've lost something. I've lost readings from the Catechism. I should have made notes for this. I thought it would be more obvious as I was putting it together. <laughs> 
Well, while I'm trying to find that, let's uh, show this, which I had forgotten earlier. There is a, a section that has the Psalms ordered to approximate the Eucharistic liturgy. And again, very much an understanding that Christ is revealed in the Psalms. Christ comes to us, is revealed to us in the Eucharistic liturgy. There is a unity of everything that's going on here. The references to the Catechism are in the Mid-Morning Office, and there are also references to, I think, seven other books, bringing the total number of books in the St. Alfred Breviary Syllabus to about 12. An unusual sort of thing. Uh, I should mention that the, the uh, Family Morning the family prayers, I think, are probably well tested at the Brinch household because uh, Father Matthew is a stay-at-home dad with small children, and they are very useful if you have small children running around. Here is a suggestion as to how these uh, all these various offices might be used on Sunday. You know, it's it's lots of stuff on weekdays, less stuff. And I suspect that almost no one will do all of these all the time, but it might not be a bad thing to, you know, you know take up, say, for a month, then morning office, uh, review the catechism. If one is interested in the catechism of the ACNA, it's uh, very much uh, J.I. Packard, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, or if one wants a night vigil with a wider selection of readings than one might find in, say, St. Bernard's Breviary. Well, uh, uh, this is available now. This is unlike anything else I have seen. And I, uh, as I say, I'm not quite sure how I will, will use it because I'm, I am probably too lazy to do all the things that it allows me to do, but I might, uh, I might uh, find some of the parts useful. And I'm going to do something, use the affair that I don't actually say daily, because, well, I do live by myself in a tin can. But it is a reminder that uh, even when one is living alone in a, a tin can, uh, one is surrounded by the whole company of saints. You know, the, the, the image of the prayer of the church going around the world that I, I see and enjoy so much in uh, the day thou givest, Lord, has ended. And I think this is very much a book which recognizes the unity of the church, the unity of our prayer and our learning and our teaching, and uh, gives suggestions at how we might make all of our life a prayer and a celebration of the work of Christ. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, he will grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Well, I say this is a very quirky book, and I would, <laughs> I would be delighted if any of you had experience with it. And if not, well, it's moderately priced, and uh, what are you waiting for? <laughs>